we will now continue with technical objects. Last video we discussed uh, functional locations and the overview of technical objects. Now we're going to discuss equipment. So here's equipment and uh, once again plant maintenance you go master data and then you select technical objects equipment. So first thing we got to do is equipment categories <coughs> and here you first define equipment category and uh, the, the way it works in SAP when you do configuration is that it, it's progressive so the first part of the configuration will first make you create some sort of uh, variable like let's say ABC or or one two three and then you're going to use this variable later on to define it against something so here we're going to create a variable we're going to call it one which is just machine category so uh, the, the equipment category is one it's machines we give it a description we state what kind of things it could do what you know, no check and etc. So, once we define this, uh, this is not something you should be changing. By the way, it should just be uh, left alone. Uh, once you define it, then you go to define. Let's say you want to do uh, number ranges or business views. But here we're going to do number ranges. We we'll go groups. And as you see here, we have the number range set up from uh, million to 1.99 million. And here we just say that only uh, equipment category one is going to be defined in here. And then the other ones we define, which are default from SAP, are not being utilized. So that's how that works. You first define the category. It also works for uh, the way the numbering range works. It works like this for everything. It works like this for work orders, notifications equipment, bombs, anything you can imagine that it requires a number range, this is how it works. So you first, um, the way number ranges work is that you first create the NR object, right? In this case, the NR object is, one second, And our object here is equipment number. That's the NR object. You could do anything. It could be orders, notifications. That's the NR, the number range object. And that is done at the, uh, um, it's a higher level. It is done at the enterprise structure level. So then you create your NR objects. Uh, that's a pretty big piece of config, so you definitely have to go through bases on that one. You don't just go create your own NR objects. Uh, they're already created for you, and uh, it integrates very heavily with uh, configuration here. So you, so that's how the the number ranges work. So you define the NR object, and then you define the. In this case, we're doing equipment category. It could be a order type. It could be a notification type. It depends on what you're uh, giving a number range to. Uh, and then afterwards you go to your groups here will be your groups uh, these are defined right here you go intervals and define each interval so right now there's only one interval which is for that that group right there so you go groups you could create new groups you go here insert new group I'm not going to create it but that's what you do and then you assign it to a number range that exists once you assign it to a number range that exists, like here, if we go here, sorry, we click here and change, you'll see that this, when it was created, this equipment number, uh, th I mean, this MLF equipment number range group, it was assigned this number range right away. And then what you do, you take the different equipment categories that exist and you assign one of them. So you go, you, you highlight it, so you go here, uh, select element and then you uh, assign element group you see how easy it is I can go here select element assign oops sorry assign element group very easy that's how you do it or you could do it to the different group that you wish to assign it to with a different number range we're not going to save this All right so that's how that works a number range um, number range for equipment is pretty large so it should be okay you should not have to change it any 
for sure within the next tiers you don't have to change it. So after this, we go to usage period. So here it deals with the history. What well, you want to keep history on. So <clears throat> what happens whenever you change it, make any changes to a table, there's another table that keeps the data of the changes. Now the more his the more history you take, obviously the slower it be to processing, the more data it takes up. So uh, you want to define the right history field. So here these are all the technical names. You could go here and get the the real name. And then after you do that, you just say, do I want to keep usage history in it, on it, yes or no? And the way that it works is that if you check this box off, that means that any time anyone makes any changes to that, it keeps the history. It'll have a, it'll, it'll document a line item on the history behind that equipment. So in this case here, if we look A and A and L R, and we'll look at what it actually means. It is the asset number. So you guys, it, asset numbers are not being used here. So it's kind of a useless field to kind of to keep usage history on. But um, in the future, if you do use asset numbers, get to have it there. But that's what it does. It keeps the usage history, you know, history in the asset. So if I put an asset number and then delete it or put a new one, it'll keep an item every time I do any changes there. If it's an item that doesn't have a checkbox, it don't matter. It won't keep any history in it. You won't even know that somebody went in there and, and uh, put in a value or deleted a value. So that's how that works. Uh, here this is very important. The define installation and function location. This has all been set up for you already. But uh, uh, basic uh, SAP is at the moment that you create an equipment category, you got to say, am I going to allow this to be installed at a function location? And in this case, we are. Now you're wondering why wouldn't you, why won't, why wouldn't we allow this all the time? Well, there are certain items you want to install at function location, maybe like cars. If you have fleet services, and your technical objects are all vehicles and they're mobile, they could change them from plant to plant. You do not want ev those to ever be allowed to be installed at a function location, so you would not check that box off. So that's an example of why you will have that. Um, Here's a usage list. This is basically when you go into a list edit T code. You could define what fields you want here. You could also do it at the variant or layout level. And this uh, in Maple Leaf, we do it at the variant layout level, so you don't have to worry about that. 